Hello and welcome to our session 29 on quality control and improvement with Minitab. I am Professor Indrajit Mukherjee from Shailesh J. Mehta School of Management, IIT Bombay. So, we are discussing about experimentation with two factors and, uh, and we have taken one example where we want to maximize the adhesive strength and that example is taken from uh, design and analysis of experiment by Montgomery and uh, the experiment is uh, a, a combination of two factors over here and the two factor is uh, one is primer type that we see over here, one is primer type that is factor A and another one is application method that is factor B. Uh, earlier we are dealing with one factor and uh, changing that factor at different levels what we have seen one way analysis of variance. Now, uh, this is basically a uh, two way analysis of variance, this is known as two way analysis of variance that we will adopt over here and there are two factors because primarily there are two factor primer type and application method and uh, primer types are at three levels, this is level 1, level 2, level 3 and application methods are uh, at two level. So, this was B1 and B2 let us say. So, one is dipping method. So, if you go to a uh, uh, paint shop you will find that there are different ways we can do paintings like that. One is dipping when one is spraying this is the condition that is given uh, two options the industry is having and uh, the three different primer types are generally taken from suppliers we, we are having uh, source of primer type 1, 2 and 3. Uh, so, the experimenter want to figure out that what is the best combination of primer type and application method that will give me uh, will maximize my adhesive strength which is the CTQ. So, experiment was conducted like this way. So, these are the uh, uh, level 1 this is uh, let us assume that this is uh, primer type is fixed at level 1 and uh, so there are uh, this is having 3 levels over here and this is having 2 levels over here. So, total if I have to explore all possible combinations so that in that case what will happen is that 3 into 2 ok. Uh, 6 combinations are possible, 6 combinations are possible. So, uh, this is A1 we can think of with B1, A1 with B2 like this, A2 with B1, A2 with B2 like this. There will be 6 combination over here and these are the 6 combination that you see. So, and each of this combination, each of this combination is run 3 times over here, each of this combination is run 3 times over here. So, combination A1 we can think of and B1 and uh, this combination we have taken three observations for this 4.5 and all with different samples over here 4.3. So, this is the replicates n equals to 3 what we can think of in this experimentation. And uh, we wanted to also ensure the uh, randomization aspects of that in experimentation uh, and while take, taking these data what was followed is that uh, random numbers are generated that which of the methods primer type we will follow and then which are the application method we will follow. So, randomly we create either B1 or B2 and primer type A1 and A2 like that and I have uh, number of samples like that. So, this observation may have, may be the first observation, but this may be the second observation, this may be the second observation. Again, this may be the third observation or experiment that was run like that. So, everything is randomized, the total data that is generated over here. So, you can see 6 into 3, 18 data that is generated over here and completely randomized over here. So, that we do not know that whether it is third factor, hidden factor. So, to uh, so, to minimize the effect of the hidden factors like that we have randomized the experimentation over here. So, this is very important randomization is done and replication 3 was taken. This is the CTQ or adhesive strength that was measured over here 4, 4.5 and 4.3 like this. So, all these are measurements of the adhesive strength and uh, this is the complete experimental setup. So, all possible combination. So, this is known as uh, asymmetric design, this is known as asymmetric design because one is at three level, one is at two levels like that. When the levels are equal in that case what happens is that that, that, that becomes a symmetric design like that. Here what we are doing is that all possible, all possible combination what we are doing is that uh, this is at different levels of A and different levels of B like that ok. So, this is asymmetric design and we will try to see how to analyze asymmetric design and uh, also please remember that this adhesive force over here which is y characteristics which is a continuous variable over here and the other factors with this can be categorical this can be assumed to be categorical that means there is no uh, sequence we can place them. So, any of the primer types 1, 2, 3. So, this is a categorical variable also and application method is also a categorical variable that you can see. So, factors that we have selected is a categorical variable, but the response that is coming out of the process that means uh, the adhesive, adhesive strength is a continuous variable and you have to remember that in design of experiment why should be continuous, why should be continuous then we can adopt this uh, 
uh, analysis of variance. We, we can do analysis of variance uh, and for that uh, these techniques are developed based on that primary assumptions like that ok. Factors can be continuous also and factors can be mixture of continuous variable and categorical variable that is also possible like that ok. Here we have two variables which are categorically specifically primer type and application method. Application methods are two has two labels dipping and spraying. Two, two possible ways we can do that and primer type 3 options we are having primer type 1, 2, 3 like that ok. So, uh, this is the general uh, uh, tabular form of a uh, when we collect the data like that. So, we have seen that A1 is combination with B1 like this and A2 combination is done with B2 combinations like this and like this we can generalize up to B labels, uh, we can have B labels of factor B and a label small a labels of factor a over here. So, this can be generalized we can write a generalized generalized form we can write the data we are collecting like this and each is having a n replicates over here each is having a n replicates. So, everywhere there is a n replicates over here. So, this can be we can say this is a balanced design this is a balanced design. So, balanced uh, design. So, uh, we will use balanced design concept well and balancing is an important aspect. So, theory, the theory supports that we should balance the design. Uh, so, that gives you better estimation. So, that is one of one of the assumptions that we are uh, generally people tries to do in design of experiment number of samples that is taken for any combination is generally equal number of samples is considered. Although analysis can be done if it is not equal, but we are assuming a balanced design over here. So, in this case uh, label uh, A are the labels uh, of factor A. B can be factor B like this and N is the number of replicates that we have considered. So, mathematical model that is uh, for each of this variable is written as mu plus tau y plus beta j and uh, there is another component tau beta uh, also tau tau multiplied by beta over here. So, these are primarily due to uh, this this change in y uh, is modeled with overall mean over here and the effect of factor A and effect of factor B and also uh, we have taken another combination of this because in single factor this is not coming whenever more than one factor what will happen is that there is a possibility of interaction which is known as A multiplied by B over here. So, sometimes and, and to understand interaction what, what we can simply think of that uh, when we write a function let us say all are A and B are continuous variable over here. So, in this case uh, A y can be a function of A y can be a function of b, y can also be a function of a multiplied by b like that. So, this is the uh, or uh, when we write polynomial equations like that. So, curvature in the in the response surface is is because of this interaction if it is present at all. So, in this case or higher order terminologies it can be a square also in the models. So, when we develop the regression equation y equals to beta 0 plus beta 1 x uh, or a over here which is significant let us say beta 2 of b is significant over here and it can be beta 1 to a multiplied by b also which is significantly influencing the expected value of y ok. So, uh, that we can think of as interaction in simple terminology we can think of that as an interaction over here. So, in the models it has to be, to be considered now we have to check whether the interaction is significant or not and based on that only the combination best combination of A and B can be derived ok and mean times gives you option to uh, estimate the interactions also. If you have done full fact full uh, all combinations of that you can calculate what is the interaction effects like that. So, effect of factor A on uh, the CTQ effect of factor B on the mean of CTQ let us assume that we are optimizing the mean over here. So, mean of CTQ of B and uh, what is the effect of A, in, A, A, A interactions of A B on the expected value of Y like that or CTQs like that. So, all these three components can be estimated if you have done all combinations if you have taken all combinations of A and B that is possible and mean times gives you estimation of uh, each of these factor effects uh, clearly like that. Okay, and ANOVA analysis will also show what is the effect of A, uh, whether it is significant or not B uh, is significant. When I change the label of A, whether it is influencing the expected value of Y, when I change the label of B, whether it is impacting uh, the value of uh, uh, expected value of Y or uh, when I change both, is it impacting the uh, expected value of Y like that. Ok. Uh, so, these are the general terminologies and you can see books uh, to see the uh, derivations of this. So, what is given is that for A uh, and you will get a analysis of variance table when we are when we are analyzing two uh, two way ANOVA over here. So, two way ANOVA. So, one uh, this is two factor ANOVA we can think of uh, analysis of variance table. So, in this case uh, when we have done all combinations of that we can estimate the effect of A and that is uh, source of variation that means, so sum of square of variation can be calculated which is SSA. Degree of freedom because we have A labels of A, so A minus 1 and mean square error also we can calculate which is nothing but sum of square error divided by degree of freedom and uh, then uh, 
for b also which is at b level so b minus 1 is the degree of freedom and interaction fx what we are talking about a multiplied by b is nothing but a minus 1 and b minus 1 multiplication of these two and total degree of freedom will be total number of observations that we have taken minus 1 and then uh, error degree of freedom can be subtraction of this minus all of this. So, if we subtract this one we will get this formulation a b n minus 1 like that ok. So, I can calculate the mean square of a mean square of b and I can also calculate mean square of a b and mean square of error can also be calculated based on the degree of freedom that is that is already we have, but it requires some degree of freedom. So, I need de error degree of freedom also to calculate mean square error over here. So, it cannot be 0 or uh, we do not have. So, uh, based on which uh, we can derive all this mean square and then uh, what we can calculate is f values of for uh, this effect of a, effect of a can be calculated by okay, effect of a whether it is significant or not, how do we check that? Uh, we, we we take the mean square error divided by mean square, divided by mean square error uh, or uh, uh, mean square uh, factor a divided by mean square error over here will give me a f value. Similarly, for b also we get f, f value and similarly for a b interaction we get a f value. Then this f value will be uh, uh, will be uh, uh, whether whether this is uh, uh, greater than tabulated value. So, we calculate the tabulated value of this uh, and uh, enumerated degree of freedom for a and uh, denominated uh, degree of freedom uh, e we, we can we can we already know because degree of freedom is already given. So, a minus 1 is the numerator degree of freedom and a b n minus 1 is the numerator degree of freedom. So, f 0 whether it is greater than this one this this will generate the p values over here and we can also calculate the p values. So, p values will be generated by mini tab and if p is less than 0 0.05 what we will say is that factor a influences the expected. When I change the factor a it is influencing the uh, expected value of uh, CDQ like that ok. So, at least there is two labels when I change from one label to the other that is the interpretation in one way analysis also. Similarly, for B also we can calculate we can see whether the p value is less than 0 0.05. So, everywhere p value can be calculated and Minitab will do it automatically for you and to say that whether A is significant, B is significant or A B is significant like that. So, we can interpret that way and Minitab does this complete calculation if you if you fit the data set and it will give you all informations like that ok. Uh, so, uh, that is the interpretation. So, let us let us try to see the examples that we have taken and try to see how to analyze the data and, and uh, represent the data in Minitab. So, I am taking the same examples that with uh, primer type and dipping and spraying method. So, the data is located over here C1, C2 and C3 column over here what you see in this screen. So, primer type methods and adhesive force over here. And, uh, and this experiment was carried out. So, how to analyze this one? What we have to do is that we have to go to STAT and then go to ANOVA and there is a balanced ANOVA information over here. There is a balanced ANOVA information over here. So, what you do is that ANOVA, balanced ANOVA and you click that one and then what you will do is that uh, you have to identify which is the response that you have to analyze. This is adhesive force which, which we want to maximize let us say and primer type and the method are the two factors that we have selected in uh, one is in C2 column, one is in C1 column like that. And uh, to understand we have to also incorporate primer type multiplied by uh, methods over here to understand the interaction effect is prominent or not ok. We do not have any random factor this is fixed effect model we are we are selecting that this is a fixed, fixed effect model and there is no random factor as such. So, in this case what we will do is that in options uh, we will not use uh, we will not take this one. So, uh, so in graph what we will do is that we we have the same assumptions like in regression here also assumptions remain same. So, residual should be normal it should be uh, there should not be any heteroscedasticity like that and residuals versus order like that. So, this can also be verified when we are doing design of experiments like this two way analysis of variance. So, what we can do is that we can we can also see whether the variance is same or not because of change of these factors over here. So, if you go to ANOVA you will find test of equal variance whether the variance is same for different combinations like that. So, I have given that adhesive force is the is the variable or response over here and which are the two factors primer type and method over here and in options uh, I am using not if, if I do not use normal distribution assumptions for the data set and uh, we will get by Levin's test we, we can get that one and uh, results we have given all possibilities over here if you want to store that is a possible, but I will click ok let us say let us assume and uh, in this case what happens is that I get a p value over here. So, different combinations of 
primer type and methods over here what you are seeing is that and the p value of Levin's test what is important for me and Levin's test uh, indicates that p value is more than 0 0.05. So, in this case this indicates that uh, there is at least no heteroscedasticity when I when I change the combinations of primer type and methods like that uh, more or less all the variance is same and uh, and that is not different. So, in this case uh, we can adopt this one. So, first uh, this assumptions has to be verified. So, this is verified over here. Now, what we can do is that we can go to stat ANOVA uh, balanced ANOVA let us say and adhesive force is a factor that is taken over here adhesive force you can just click this one and this is the interaction that we have taken and in options uh, this is the we will not click this one in graph what we will do normal probability plot residual versus fit to see if heteroscedasticity is still there in the, in the error like that we, we want to check. And if you want to store the residual, you can store the residual also to see the normal distribution assumptions like that. Then what you do is that you click OK. Uh, what will happen is that you will get a ANOVA analysis table like this what, what we have just discussed. So, if, if I copy this one and paste it in Excel let us say and uh, uh, we want to see that uh, uh, somewhat enlarged image of this. So, we want to see this one what interpretation we make out of this then we will see how to how to do further analysis over here. So, in this case what I am doing is that I am pasting this information over here and uh, when I enhance this one what I see is that source of variation primer type that is when I change the primer type whether it is in impacting the expected value of y yes because p value is less than 0 0.05 and methods when I change the method is it significantly impacting uh, the expected value yes it is also impacting the adhesive adhesive strength over here is primer type interaction between primer type and method is impacting uh, the expected value no basically it is not because p value is more than 0 0.05 this is 0 0.269 that means uh, active uh, uh, over here uh, which is impacting y expected value of y is primer type when I change the primer type and when I change the method basically when I change the primer type and when I change the method over here ok. So, uh, uh, this is prominent from this ANOVA analysis and uh, it is also showing that uh, the model how much adequate this model is. So, in this case if, if I paste this one and just show you uh, the model adequacy checks that one of the checks that is R square uh, adjusted value because there are two variables over here. So, it is around 86 percent which is quite good enough and um, this says that total variability of the y is explained by these two factor primer type and methods up to uh, 86 percent of that R square adjusted value is quite high. And, uh, and uh, this this is the interpretation that we are getting over here and normal probability plot is given over here and also the residual plot which does not seems to be very uh, there is no pattern as such. So, we can say the heteroscedasticity is not there which is also proved at the initial stage when we have done this Levin's test like that. So, normal probability plot also does not show much deviation and we can check this one and whether it is adhering to the normality assumptions because we want to make conclusions based on this. So, basic statistics what we can do is that we can do the normality test at the end of the data set residual 1 and if you do this one what will happen is that you will get a p value which is more than 0 0.05, 0 0.425 and that indicates that it is not deviating from normality assumptions. So, model adequacy check is an important aspect when even if I am doing uh, two factor analysis of variance. So, in that case also the error assumption that we have taken in regression is also applicable over here and uh, we have to adhere to that if it is not again transformation and all these things will come ok. Anyhow, so this is the primer type methods and adhesive force. Now, uh, which is different from which one multiple comparison tests are also possible, but let us try to see one more thing important aspects over here which is known as interaction plots like that. We want to see that uh, plot plotting is also possible over here analysis of variance. So, in this case uh, there are two plot options that we will see main effect plot and interaction plot over here. Let us assume uh, let us try to see what is main effect plot. So, main effect plot uh, we have to draw this one and try to see adhesive force is the response over here and factors that we have considered primer type and method type over here. And in options we can uh, we can say what is the uh, minimum of y. So, these titles and all these things can be added. So, if you click ok over here you will get the main effect plot like this. What does it indicate basically? What does it indicate? When primer type is 1 uh, what is the average value of uh, uh, average value of uh, uh, this uh, experimental data set that we have got. So, uh, uh, when all the data that is for primer type 1 is combined and the average value you get a point uh, you get the average value you can just plot that one. When the primer type is 2 what is the average value that we are getting of uh, adhesive strength that this is the point that we are seeing over here. Similarly, for when when the primer type is 3 what is the adhesive strength. 
So, if you have to select over here which which type of primer type I will select uh, the, that will maximize the adhesive strength immediately I can say 2 is the uh, 2 is the primer type that I should adopt over here. Similarly, methods for dipping and spraying over here what you are observing over here dipping is giving a lower mean as compared to spraying when I am using spraying method over here. So, if you are going by method selection I will go by spraying always over here ok. I will go by spraying over here and primer type 2 over here. So, this is uh, when there is no interaction when there is no interaction I will go by the main effect plot and I, I, I can get the best combination based on this main effect plot over here which is also uh, we can do by seeing the interaction plots like that that we will take next ok. So, this is the interpretation. So, when we have main effect plot there is no interaction just do the main effect plot and see the best combination and to find out the best combination what you can do is that primer type 2 and uh, methods over here spraying can be adopted over here uh, and uh, multiple comparison test can be seen whether primer types 2 is very different from 1 and 3 like that whether uh, spraying methods is very different from dipping methods like that that is also possible to be done and that can be done when you go to stat over here analysis of variance over here and maybe general linear model over here and go to comparison test over here and we can use two case comparison test for this we will take the adhesive force over here and two case test and I want to see primer type and method whether they are different like that and in options we do not want to change anything over here. Uh, we do not want to see all these uh, results and also grouping information is required because two case test is based on grouping. I go to grouping information what I see is that primer type 2 uh, if I can copy this one you, you will be able to see copy as picture over here and I paste that one over here. So, uh, what I will do is that I will, I will just paste this one and it says that primer type 2 is having a letter code of A which is very different from 1 and 3 like that. So, 2 we should select like that because it is very different from the other one and uh, then we can also see what, what happens with that uh, uh, spraying and dipping over here. So, in this case also we can copy as a picture and we can paste it over here. Uh, to understand because there is no interaction effects that is why we are seeing this grouping information of two case test only on this individual factors and what we are seeing is that spray, spraying is very different it is giving a higher mean as compared to the dipping methods over here. So, clearly I can identify that spraying should be adopted and primer type 2 should be adopted over here. So, that that is the best combination which is giving me a high expected value high expected value of the adhesive force like that ok uh, adhesive strength like that ok. So, this is possible over here this is possible over here and uh, now we can we, we can also see this combination best combination by seeing the interaction plot also. So, what we can do is that uh, we can go to ANOVA analysis and we have an option of interaction plot also ok. So, even if interaction is not prominent we can see the interaction plot and how do we do that adhesive force and factor is primer type and method over here and I have clicked this display full interaction plot over here and in this case options I am not doing anything I will click ok over here and when I when I click this one I will get a full interaction plot over here. So, in this case you see one of the diagram over here I am taking I am taking the lower lower left hand side diagram over here. So, in this case what you see is that uh, this blue line indicates that this is the dipping method and this is the spraying method. So, individual points over here this I assuming uh, this is the first point that we are locating over here. So, when the primer type is 1 and uh, we have adopted dipping method what is the average expected value of adhesive for adhesive strength that we have noted down what is the average value of adhesive strength. So, this is the first point that we are getting similarly second point when combination is primer type 2 and dipping method what was the average values of the uh, strength information adhesive strength like that. Similarly, this point is generated like that and similarly this are the uh, on top what you see is that spraying method uh, average strength that is reported over here. So, in this complete figure what is observe what we can observe is that this is the highest point this is the highest point that we are seeing 6.066 that value we are getting over here. So, this indicates that primer type 2 is the uh, is the is the primer that we should we should select and dipping or or uh, sorry and spraying is the method that we should adopt. So, because if I take these two combination the we we are getting a higher uh, adhesive strength we are getting a higher adhesive strength over here. So, either we can see from this side also and you can see also this diagram which is also same uh, interpretation remains same over here. So, uh, we will go by primer type 2 and the, this is the best combination. So, this uh, top value that you see over here. So, spraying is the combination with primer type 2 like this ok. So, uh, this way we can find out which is the best combination which is the best combination like that ok. Uh, and uh, what we can what, what we can also see over from this is that uh, 
if I cannot control let us say primer type over here 1, 2, 3 in actual manufacturing process whatever. If I cannot control this one, uh, but I can control spraying over here. So, I will always freeze to spraying method. I will always try to adopt spraying method because irrespective of the primer type that I am adopting over here 1, 2 or 3, uh, I, I will always by spraying method, I will always get a higher value as compared to dipping method over here. So, if I cannot control this one, I will go by that one. Okay. But if and also if, if due to manufacturing capacity, uh, dipping and spraying has to be combined like that, I do not have any control over here. Uh, then which type of primer type I should use? I should use primer type too because it is always giving a higher mean as compared to any other primer types like that. So, that is also another interpretation we can make out of this. If I cannot control one, what should be the setting of the other which I can control basically. So, that we have to think and then adopt which is the combination. So, uh, what we have told like that. So, uh, we are doing model adequacy checks, we are seeing interaction plot, we are also seeing the uh, uh, comparison test, multiple comparison test, uh, pairwise comparison test of two case test we are adopting, uh, which combination should be selected uh, like that. And uh, interpretation is same like analysis of variance interpretation. So, what we can do is that ANOVA analysis. So, balanced ANOVA we have to go add a C primer type and the primer type and method that is the option. And when you click this one, you will get the ANOVA table which will indicate that now, which factor is significant. So, primer type is significant what we are seeing, method is significant over here, but interaction is not significant which is around 0.269. Uh, what we are getting ok. So, uh, when they are uh, when they are together acting in that case, it is not impacting y expected value of y at least what we can interpret out of this. Model is summarized r square is quite high that means, uh, the model uh, the factor that we have selected is quite uh, adequate factors and it is explaining 90 uh, about 90 percent of the very 86 percent of the variability over here. Normal probability and distribution assumptions are also uh, quite ok. And uh, we can we, we can do all these tests like that. So uh, over here, and uh, and there is another option that means we can also develop some regression equation based on this primer type. Although this is categorical variable and adhesive force over here, we can also develop. There is an option like analysis of variance. What, what I have told is in one way analysis also we told we use generalized general linear model over here. So the assumption is normality assumption is taken uh, is considered over here, but we can fit a general linear model also, and we can say that uh, we want to see adhesive force over here. And this is the uh, primer type and method that we are adopting over here. Uh, so, uh, then in this case uh, models uh, because there is no interaction I am not considering that interaction effects over here. So, primer type uh, and uh, this one and if you click ok over here. So, in this case uh, options we do not want to change anything and in graphs what we can do is that residual plots we can see that is also possible, but uh, we uh, we are not using any stepwise regression. So, we are not using because we have finalized that uh, main effect is prominent over here. So, in this case if you click ok what will happen is that uh, you this on coded variables this will be coded C 1 and C 2 will be coded variables will be used and that this will be modeled with adhesive and the equations will be given. So, regression equation you can see over here. So, this is the regression equation that is developed and variation inflation factor is not there and these two are the prominent factors that is uh, what we can see. And based on this uh, basic uh, regression model what we can do is that we can also predict, we can also predict what uh, what value of adhesive force is expected like that. So, if you go to analysis of variance general linear model using this model that was fitted by general linear model then in that case uh, what we can do is that predict, you can also predict this one. So, if, if it is primer type uh, 2 in this case and the method is spraying over here. I want to predict what should be the expected value of adhesive strength like that uh, adhesive strength. If you click ok over here and what you get is that around 6 is the uh, fit that we are expecting over here. So, if I copy this one as picture over here and I paste it over here. So, this uh, what we will see is that the predicted value uh, or expected value is around 6.2 uh, and this is uh, with some prediction interval and confidence interval based on the regression equation general linear model fitting and this was done. We can we can think of general linear model as a, a as a generalized view of linear regression model that we are discussing earlier like that. So, it is at a broader umbrella you can think of ok. So, uh, this way also we can we can have a prediction model like that and this is categorical variable they will be coded and based on that regression will be developed you can see more on general linear model in Minitab inter Minitab uh, websites also and you can see in any other books also you will find general linear model how the models are developed how the beta are estimated like that how uh, variables are coded like that that you can see ok. So, uh, this is uh, one options that we have. And uh, these are all this both the factors are categorical over here. You see both the factors are categorical over here. And uh, 
but scenarios can be that one is categorical one is continuous like that one is categorical one is continuous that will be our next example that is uh, second example that we will discuss battery life design experimentation battery life de design experimentation where uh, uh, factors that is selected over here one is material type and one is temperature over here one is material type one one is temperature and the battery life is measured over here and these are the values of and uh, four replicates are done at each combination of this material type and temperature so uh, this is a balanced design what we what you can see is that four in every trials four replicates are collected over here and also the number of levels of temperature and number of levels of this is same so you can think of as a symmetric design uh, symmetric design over here. Earlier one was asymmetric, this is a symmetric design and one of the factor is categorical over here, categorical over here, but one of the factor over here is continuous that is temperature is a continuous variable. So, this is continuous. So, earlier uh, both the factors are uh, categorical. So, how to analyze that one we have seen. Now, we are trying to see uh, this experimentation which was uh, which was uh, this data was reproduced from this design of experiment by Montgomery and how to analyze this data, how to make interpretation out of this data when one is categorical and one is continuous variable, but at discrete levels we have just experimented 15, 70 and 125 that we will see uh, in our next session. Thank you for listening.